So we have previously solved a system that was tall and not very wide. In other words, it had very few variables and many equations. And we were very lucky to even find one solution. Now we have a system that actually has very many variables, five in fact, and only a single equation. That equation reads 2x plus 5y plus 6z plus 7t plus 241u equals 6. Now, this equation is downright silly, but I think it's very helpful to look at these quote-unquote crooked systems because they really expose the structure and the relevant counts of what's going on. So we'll count the dimensions, which is very important and will become even more important as we go on. Okay, so whereas before we were lucky to have a solution, now we are not lucky to have a solution, we're guaranteed a solution. In fact, we have one, two, three, five columns, five vectors in a one-dimensional space. All of these columns live in R1. So, and we have five of them. One non-zero one would have been enough. And we have five, which means that we'll have a very rich null space because we have five vectors in a one-dimensional space. We're pretty much guaranteed that there will be four relationships among four different relationships among these vectors all will contribute new dimensions to the null space okay so let's keep all of this in the back of our minds and just pursue the strategy we always pursue which is to identify a particular solution and then the null space and then put them together to form a general solution so for the particular solution you just need to take three of the first column to get the six and none of any of the other columns. Or you could have taken one of the third column, or you could have taken six 241st of the last column and none of the other columns. The choice is entirely up to you. And as we've discussed several times, the expression would be different, but the set of vectors that it captures is the same. So let's go with my original suggestion which is three of the first column and none of the rest. Now comes the null space, which is all about relationships among the columns. And when we only have one entry in a column, it's very easy to relate the columns. In fact, it may be so easy that it is difficult to see. I find that early on when one studies a subject, a new subject, that overly easy problems are actually harder than uh, problems with a little bit more data, with a little bit more complexity. So this is indeed a very good exercise. So the second column is five halves of the first one. So what we can do is take five halves of the first, subtract the second, and ignore the rest. And this is the element in the null space that exploits the relationship between the first two columns. Now the third column is three times the first column. So plus beta, three of the first, none of the second, that produces the third. So subtracting the third, not using the fourth or the fifth, gives us the second element. How are we doing on space? We're running out of space, but Maybe we'll just make it. So for the third entry, element in the null space, we'll take advantage of the relationship of the fourth column to the first. And it is seven halves. And now maybe we're getting into the sort of fractions that are not very pretty. So how about this alternative approach? Why don't we take seven of this column, none of this, none of this, and make up for it by taking minus two of the second column. That's just the way to work with integer numbers. So let's do that. So 7, 0, 0, minus 2, 0. Okay, fantastic. And there is just one more. Hopefully it fits. It does fit perfectly. And it has to do with the relationship of this column to the first column. And I always relate all columns to the first column, not because it's required, but because it's good to be systematic. So that's my way of doing it. So, of course, we'll do the same sort of trick. We'll take 241 of the first column, 
none of the second, none of the third, none of the fourth, and minus two of the last. And that's the null space. And once again, you might say, by the way, the problem is solved, but you might once again say, well, I'm also noticing that this column is 7 6 times this column. So shouldn't we add 0, 0, minus 7, 6, 0. Gamma, delta, what's, what's another letter? Epsilon. So shouldn't this be part of the null space? And the short answer is no. The longer answer will come soon enough. But we will very soon discuss this question. How many entries are there in the null space? When do you stop? So right now I will answer this question partially and just will give you an indication of why this vector should not be added to the vectors in the null space. Well, that's because it's already in it. Here is why it's already in it on an intuitive level. Well, that's because if we know that this column is six halves of this column, and we also know that this column is seven halves of this column, then that already tells us the relationship between these two columns. Does that make sense? If we know how this column relates to this one and how this column relates to this one, and those relationships are that simple, that already tells us the relationship among these columns. So the example that I usually have is if person B makes twice what person A makes, and person C makes 10 times what person A makes, then person C makes five times what person B makes. So the first two pieces of information already give us a third piece of information. The same thing happens here. When we've observed this and this, then we already know this relationship among the columns. So that's the intuitive answer. Now, how do we formally know that this vector is already in this mix? Well, I'm sure I'll be able to find the values of beta and gamma that will actually produce this vector, showing us that it's already in this mix. And that combination is, well, would have to be seven of this. So beta would have to be seven, giving us this minus seven, and gamma would have to be minus three. And you will notice that seven of this vector minus three of this vector actually produces this vector. So that's a formal way of answering why this vector should not be in this mix. But it doesn't give you the full answer on when, I, as I'm going through this process, when do I stop? When is enough? So that answer is coming soon enough.